Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're taking a look at and installing the Everchill RV refrigerator on our 2019 Integra Odyssey. So this fridge has a lot of features just like your household fridge does, uh, one of them being auto defrost. So it's, it's nice to know that you're not going to have you know, frost buildup and all that other stuff on the inside. It is automatically controlled. Uh, it's 10 cubic foot. You have a separate freezer and refrigerator and there's plenty of storage. Um, you even have a crisper drawer for produce things like that. Uh, when you first plug this in, it's going to draw 8 to 9 amps. Uh, remember, it is a 12 volt fridge, um, and that's the only thing that powers it is 12 volts. It's no propane um, and no, no alternating current. So um, it draws 8 to 9 amps to, to cool down initially, and then once it's cool, um, you're looking at probably like 2.5 amps or so. So it's a pretty decent current draw. I like the way it looks in here the, with the stainless. Once you have um, a stainless package on your RV like that. It really does blend in well. Uh, much like your house fridge as well, you've got separate controls for the freezer. You have the cold all the way to colder knob. And then for the refrigerator, you've got five different settings um, for your temperature controls here. It also has a nice LED light for the fridge, which is nice for grabbing stuff up at night. The last feature I like, especially being in a moving vehicle like this, is a latch to keep your door shut. So just in case uh, you hit a bump or something like that, it will, this will keep your door shut while driving down the road. It did not install nice. Um, we replaced um, a Norcold that came with this coach initially, and it was uh, just a completely different refrigerator. Uh, the way that it cools and the way that it loses heat. So we had to do a lot of modifications to get this in here. We even had to disconnect the door just to get it in here. Uh, not completely take it off its hinges, but uh, take one of the prop rods off, and we had to do some modification on the cabinetry. So if you want to see how we did this, uh, stick around. We'll show you. Okay, so we're going to pull the old refrigerator out of here. Uh, now, on this Integra here, we have a Norcold, um, and the thermostat we've already um, taken off the wall and kind of brought it around because we're going to need this space. Um, to pull the old fridge out. So to begin with, you're going to have two Phillips head screws that are holding the upper trim in. Once you pull those out, just pull the trim out. You're going to have two clip fasteners up here at the top. And it's going to be the same process on the bottom. Next, head outside and above on the passenger side, above your rear wheels, you'll have the hot water heater and then you'll have this panel here. This is for the outside of your fridge. You're going to have all, the, all of the connections that you need to get to. You're going to have your propane line here. So you want to make sure that your propane, your main propane is turned off. Um, you're also going to have an electrical connection on the wall over here. We can plug, unplug that. You're going to have two sheet metal screws, or maybe three, depending on your model here. Uh, we pulled these up just so you can see where they are. Now, if you need to verify that your propane is off, just come to this door here. It's going to be uh, one of the few doors on your RV that's, that doesn't have a lock on it. And you're going to have your main control knob in here for the propane. Just twist that clockwise and make sure that your propane is off. Now to remove the propane line, you're going to need a 3 quarter inch wrench and a 7 8 inch wrench. 7 8 inch wrench will go on the manifold. And the 3 quarter can go right there. You may hear some hissing from the propane. As long as it stops, we're fine. Now we're going to end up capping this off. Uh, the new refrigerator that we, that we are installing is only 12 volts. Now the last connection we need to uh, disconnect is going to be the 12 volt line. That's going to be the white and green wires here. So just take a Phillips screwdriver. We'll come to the underside of this compartment here. And we'll just disconnect the spade connectors. Now when we pull the fridge out from the inside, we just want to make sure stuff like the, uh, the cord here doesn't get tangled up and we'll just make it nice and easy. Just kind of tuck this up here and just make sure nothing else is connected. Then we can come inside and I like to come up at the top, just gives you a little bit of room. Again, be careful of your thermostat and just walk it out to the edge. If you have an extra set of hands, 
it would be a good idea. These things can get heavy. Now, in order to get the refrigerator outside, we had to do a, a couple of things. One, uh, we had to remove the trim uh, from around the refrigerator. It's just a series of sheet metal screws, 5 sixteenths, and the trim will come right off. The second thing we had to do was we needed to disconnect the piston on the bottom of the door so that the door opened up all the way uh, because it is a tight tolerance trying to get it through that door. You definitely need two people. and. There's not a lot of places to hang on to this thing. It's sharp, it's bulky, so just be careful getting it out. Okay, so we got the new fridge in the door. Good news, it fit. Just barely, but it fit. So right out of the gate, we wanted to let you know about some of the problems that we were having uh, with this fridge and our Integra coach. Right out of the gate, I'll tell you right now that this is not gonna be something that you can just pull your old nor cold out and slide this right in. Um, first off, the opening for the Norcold here with the trim up was 23 and a half inches. The width of our refrigerator, even though it showed uh, a quarter inch less, there was no way it was going in there. Um, I think just with the manufacturing and all that other things, we ended up having to remove the upper wood trim and the side piece here. Although not a big deal, this is something you absolutely need to consider if you don't have uh, woodworking skills or something like that because we did end up having to cut the trim here and we'll have to cut the trim at the top. Um, good news is with this fridge installed, uh, the doors pretty much hide any of the work that we're going to be doing, so it's not a big deal. Um, number two issue, the Norcold was uh, designed to be installed in here for, you know, for an RV. This particular Everchill fridge is a freestanding unit. It's meant more as a, as a home or uh, you know, uh, a refrigerator that's not going to be moving all over the place. It actually has wheels on the bottom to help you slide it back into position. So um, we're going to need to anchor this fridge and we've got the back figured out because we do have an access panel on the outside that will be able to bolt it down similar to what they did with the Norcold. However, for the upper section that we have no way to anchor the top of the fridge or the side of the fridge. You can't screw into this. The, uh, the coils are inside the walls uh, of this fridge. So um, we have uh, some ideas. Uh, we haven't really figured it out just yet, but when we, when we do, we'll let you know. Um, and the third thing that we're going to need to do, and it's not a big deal, um, is we need to reverse the doors. Uh, currently, the doors are opening from the left side of the fridge. And good news, the kit comes, or the, the fridge comes with a kit so that you're able to reverse the doors. Now, the reason we're doing that is because the thermostat here, um, if we open the doors from the left here, it's contacting the, the doors on the refrigerator. So instead of moving the thermostat, which is an option if you want, but then you'll have a hole um, in your wall. So instead of moving the thermostat, we're just going to reverse the doors. It will open from this way, which to me is... Um, still annoying, but not as annoying as a hole in your wall. So that's where we're at. I'll show you real quick how to uh, change the doors from a left hand to a right hand. So on top of the fridge, you're going to have some panels that you need to, re to remove. And I've already kind of loosened them up. So uh, you can take a screwdriver or just something flat and you'll just pop these off. You have this one. And then on the left hand side of the fridge, you're going to have another similar blanking panel and then this small tab here you pull that out uh, to remove the hinge uh, you can just use a Phillips screwdriver then you can remove the door Then we'll remove these two, the, the hinges and then the doorkeeper on this side. Pull out and lift up and remove the large door. 
Then we'll need to lay our fridge back just to gain access underneath. Now do your best not to lay the fridge completely flat on its back. It's, it'll be hard on the compressor and then you'd have to, uh, more than likely you would want to wait 24 hours, let all the oil come back down to the compressor. Now if you just set it off at like a 45 degree angle like this, you're going to be better off. Anyway, we're going to be removing the front adjustment feet. They simply unthread counterclockwise. And then we can turn our attention to the lower hinge. We need to take that off. It's going to be three of these bolts. Again, a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, now this gets installed over here. So install it first, and then we'll be switching these two studs out here. Now the mounting holes are in there. They may have been covered with foam and you may not be able to see them, but they are there. So it'll mount up just like this. We're gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna loosen this up. swap positions. Then screw the feet back in. Then once you run them in, you can stand your fridge back up. Then we'll take the main door and flip it over. There'll be a nylon hinge here that we need to take off, flip over, and put on the other side. Two Phillips head screws. And then take this and simply flip it over. Then simply slide the door back on, set it in place, and then we'll grab the upper hinge. And we'll reinstall the two bolts that are holding that on. Now, if you take your freezer door and flip it upside down, you're going to see another nylon hinge piece. Um, we, don't, we need to take this off. We don't reuse it. The kit will come with a new one for the other side here. Then you can set the freezer door. Back on. We can take the upper hinge plate and just line up the pre-existing holes and we'll tighten these down. Now you'll see the two pre-existing holes. The other two are covered with foam but um, they are already tapped. So you want four bolts in your hinge. Then you can take the caps, replace those, And then the hinge cover plate. Then we just have to install the door keeper. Okay, so these are the trim pieces that we took off the door cold. Uh, it had two of these for the sides and it had a top and a bottom trim. So um, everything that I used here uh, you would also have. So um, for our install, to seal the gaps up, you can see I used, I reused the top trim piece 
from the nor cold I had to trim um, the hinge side over here since we reversed the hinges so I just cut that piece of plastic over there and this is a full uh, piece of trim running all the way down and then it we just ran our old bottom plate across again I had to trim it on the inside and this trim place this trim plate is sitting on uh, the uh, fridge sitting on top of that so the legs of the refrigerator sitting on top of this so you can see the cuts at the uh, on this trim piece here uh, I have one at the top and one at the bottom because this is the piece uh, we needed to take out just to be able to get the fridge uh, installed back here so we did that um, and then we just have uh, a little bit of RTV silicone or, or silicone seal it a dab at the top middle and bottom to secure it and the trim is screwed in top and bottom so the the silicone is more or less just to keep it from vibrating as you go down the road um, and you can see we put our thermostat uh, back on the wall so we don't have to worry about holes in the wall right there uh, this does work just fine with the doors and the clearance with the thermostat. It's close, but it works. Now, when it comes to wiring your refrigerator, um, you can come outside and this panel will expose the entire back to it just like this, and it's super easy. What we did was we reused the existing green and white wires. Remember, the green was positive and the white was negative. Uh, we added a frame ground wire. This is going to run up to our ground on the control panel here, the brown. Uh, and just run that down to your frame um, or to a point on the battery to ground it out. So you'll have your positive, negative, and then a frame ground. So the frame ground I just ran along with the factory wiring right down here. I drilled a hole right next to it and it was easy access um, to get to underneath the cabinet uh, under your refrigerator and that's underneath all the kitchen cabinets. So you have a lot of room to work and find a spot to go down and out of your coach. Now installing this fridge was just a little bit of a challenge because we need to make sure it's secure and it's not going to tip over or slide out when you're making a right hand turn. So what we ended up doing was we removed this white metal grill and I've got chunks of plywood at the corners, the middle, and we just bolted it down with self tapping screws. Um, it really ended up securing this fridge nicely. Now the only thing left to do with the fridge working properly is to reinstall your cover plate here and start doing some chilling.